Star Wars Force Arena players, welcome to this update video. Great news, huge update coming, more changes coming. Yeah, yawn, I know, but let's jump straight into the important stuff. Back with a bang, 2v2 is finally coming home. Hallelujah. I can hear the Ewoks celebrating right now on Endor. Can you hear them? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can hear them. And arcade mode is coming back for 2v2. It's going to be 24 7. No more of this weekend nonsense. Net Marble have listened and they have apologised and said, Here, take 2v2 back. We are so grateful. Hallelujah. Draft mode is still going to be there. And also, there's a new mode energy boost. You get times 2 energy. Now, I think Clash Royale introduced um, like an energy mode recently. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you guys will let me know below in the comments. And it's kind of exciting. So this is going to be like a mode we play each other and you just get unlimited energy or times two energy and you just drop down units and see who can win. For a bit of fun, why not? We all like a bit of fun. So arcade mode, um, rotation will be as written here in the box you see. Here we go. 2v2, always, always. That's great news. Draft mode will now be Monday to Thursday. Um, and then Sunday to Thursday at different times of the day, as you can see on the screen now. And the energy boost mode will be um, Thursday to Sunday, PTD, PPDD. And uh, well, basically Friday, Friday, Friday midnight to Sunday midnight, basically. Um, so that'll be a weekend event too that you guys can jump into. So we'll talk about the energy boat. Bo energy mode now here so here we go so the new energy boost mode has been added it's a new fast paced mode we've got double the energy recharge rate as well as a smaller map to allow much quicker paced game experience which is interesting here and then obviously the same things apply as the current modes where you got challenge mode for 100 crystals or you get normal mode for free entries which is quite cool so no doubt we'll be giving that a try when I stream the game. The mode, this mode is available during certain periods as we talked about. Just like the arcade modes, challenge and battle modes are available. The rewards for the mode will be the same as 1 versus 1 draft mode. All cards will have their levels normalised. Uh, and the mode will allow the same size to battle each other. Energy boost mode will double the recharge rate of energy. And after 2 minutes, energy will recharge to 4 times faster. Wow, this is exactly what they have in Clash Royale. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Energy boost mode features. That map is small. Wow. It's like, remember the old squash? It's, well, it's like the training map, actually. It's exactly the same as the training map. Um, energy boost mode features. Deploy more units than ever before and engage in epic, fast paced battles in a new energy boost mode. With a smaller map and no, no health packs. Ooh. This map will require new strategies to win. There's no health. My lord, is that legal? Looks like it will be. Uh, here we go, a bit more of that. This is just some bullet points there, no health packs, matchmaking restrictions for sides. There's no matchmaking restrictions for sides, that's good. So, same faction, I imagine, which would be cool. And the system changes here now, we're talking about. So, changes have been made to filters in a normal deck and train deck mode. So, we've now got um, Galactic Empire, Separatist, Leader, so you can filter out the decks relevant to you and the size. So, you might play the Empire, you might play um, the Separatist, or you might play the Republic. Um, now you can filter out which cards do what, support cards, squad units, unique, you know, all those kind of things. In-game UI changes. We have been taking a look at in-game UI and found that there's way too much inf information to process at the same time and some of it takes too long to interpret. So we aim to stream on the UI in order to make the best gaming experience possible. New indicators now is the clock's time is in the middle and you've got left, right turrets and it tells you um, how many turrets are remaining, etc, etc. Uh, improve the deployment deployable card visuals to show where a card will be played if a character attempts to deploy them. So you now got like a, a box appears um, where you drop down your cards, and there you go. See on the screen before, after. Is there a difference? Before, after. See the icon underneath them now. See, gotcha. Right there, a little s separatist logo there. And then you've got the Republic logo underneath those storm tro or tr stormtroopers, so um, that's where the, they'll deploy. So you know exactly where they're going to be this time. Um, the deployable area after the first turret is destroyed has been widened. Ooh. This, therefore, will therefore split the lanes exactly in half. Okay, because before you notice, know, like now there, if you 
drop certain units in the middle lane and they'll go the wrong direction sometimes. I, know, I noticed that too. So there you go, they've improved that, which is kind of cool. So you've got more room to play in. Be interesting to see how that works in the game. But there you go, that's good. Due to the changes in the deployable area, the position of the front turrets have been adjusted. So the front turrets have been brought forward? They've been adjusted? They've been adjusted apparently. I'm looking at the picture and they both look exactly the same. Oh, it looks like they're more off to the left. This, oh, they are more off the left. So, before, if you remember before in the old game, you had the path and the turret right in front of you, but the turret now is off to the side of the path. If you look at that picture there, um, see where the turret's positioned now, it's now actually off the path rather than on the path. That's what they've done there. That'll be interesting to see how that works, actually. Um, a new icon has been added at the bottom of the screen to show double energy is active. Ooh. Um, result screen has been improved to show more details at the end of the match. So the victory pack, credits, and battle rewards. That's cool. Streamline. We like it to be streamlined. That's good. Uh, I'll see deck info as well. Point changes, rewards, um, pressure. Press to see the not to play decks. That's all highlighting what's been taken out. Um, other system changes. A new message has been added when trying to activate a skill, which has yet to come off cooldown. Respawn timer is now displayed in the middle of the screen. Improve the 10 second countdown to make it more noticeable. Um, this is a new UI, so here we go. And also, there's a new camera angle for highlights. Oh, wow, that's awesome. The new camera angle will allow you to get better pictures of what's happening in the battlefield. This view will only be available in the highlights section. So, like an overview of the battlefield. That's really nice actually and maybe for some commentary games and highlights that could be quite interesting so that is a new UI um, it's really just the middle of it has changed a lot as you can see with the new turret display and a timer there as well and obviously your icons for your, he your leaders new finishing animation uh, end of each match sudden death death concluded for example turrets are destroyed sudden death camera will focus on that destroyed tower okay it's fine rather than going off to some random spot or shield generator. Match making changes. This is big. This update we are making changes to the 2v2 matchmaking system. We will be changing the way matchmaking works in queuing against members of your own guild. To avoid win trading and other abusive systems, matching against your own guild members will be more difficult than before. If the queue time continues to be after a certain point, the game will match you against your own guild members if they're currently queuing. I didn't really know it was a big issue, but I suppose for some of the bigger guilds this has been a problem, I must think, with a win trade and then obviously do their, their weeklies, especially if guilds are really active. To try and improve the way 2v2 works, we are changing the matchmaking priorities of guild teams. The game will now try to match you with other guild teams that are currently in matchmaking. So if you're in a guild and 2v2 queue, which is perfect, rather than just... That's how it used to be. You'd match up... If you're playing a guild game, you play against other guilds rather than randoms. We are listening to all the feedback we receive about matchmaking and we're working on improving it more and more. Um, and I do believe that. I just wish I just every now and again pop in and say, thanks guys, you know, really useful stuff. Um, and hopefully the, the communication will improve. So there's other stuff there about wildcard ratio as well. So there's a ratio there about wildcards, 10% chance. Gives you a percentage chance of what you can get from your packs, which is interesting by placing I. Other changes. Guild discovery has been improved. Uh, the new system will consider different variables such as numbers of the guilds, guild type, requirements, tiers, all those things. That's good. Defe defeat enemy leaders. Guild mission numbers have been increased by 30%. Oh, wow. You can now slide across the screen to navigate the mission screen. The reward shop UI has been changed again. Fix an issue when with buying cards in a shop where you could decrease the number of cards to naught. That's interesting. Why would you buy no no cards? Um, premium boost is now available in the shop. Great idea. Finally, you can now buy it now, which is good. Players information UI in the main menu has been changed. ELO points and arcade for normal and challenge battles has been separated. Per, uh, about time. I had no idea actually they were still counting that towards one. This is probably why the matchmaker has been so off lately, which explains it. Tutorial guide has been improved, so I'll probably do a video about the tutorial guide. So let's go up to some of the new. So there are new cards in this deck, in this in this deck, in this update. Uh, so we'll jump to that right now, and there's some exciting bits coming. So here we go. Four new units. We've got clone sharpshooter, arc trooper, have been added to to the Galactic Republic, and for the separatists, you've got the assassin droid and the B2 Super Battle Droid have been added. 
So I'm not going to go into too much detail about these guys. I'll obviously show you when I do the stream. Um, but rare card for the Clone Trooper Sharpshooter. Have a good look there. All these cards on lock have got tier 9. And again, and the Arc Troopers at tier 4. So you've already gone past tier 4, tier 9. You can't unlock these cards. Now you have to get them from packs or from the shop. Arc Troopers is a common card. Looks like Heavy Gunners actually. Be interesting to see how it goes. Um, can't wait to see. It looks look super cool. Blaster cannon to decimate who's the end. Sounds like a heavy gunners thing. Tier 4. Yeah. And then here we go. Separatist Dark Side. A rare card. Assassin Droid. Don't know how they're going to work. Um, probably like the Pro by the looks of it. Um, we'll look at more of that in detail when, it, when actually in the game. I can go through those in more detail. And then you've got the big boy. Oh, it deploys six probe killers. Wow. To support itself, that's amazing. Using its sharp legs to slash nearby enemy, um, le nearby enemies. Probe killers attack nearby enemies, but their lack of hit points make a very easy target. Um, it's interesting. Level nine, and then a tier four is a common card. Battle droid. I really thought this would be an epic card, to, like a tank, but obviously not. Super battle droid is in there. Looks a bit like the Wookiee warrior. Probably just as slow, but obviously it's got range rather than melee unit. Which would be good to see in combat. Um, and there's the details of that there. So again, feel free to pause the video. And then we've got pick a winner. This is new. I have no idea what this is. But let's, let's have a look through this. Um, the new pick a winner window has been added. This new mode allows you to choose your cards in a way to attain new and different cards. So this is going to be like replacing the trade, I imagine. All you need to do is pick a winner from a chosen highlight video and if you are correct you will receive an awesome prize so here we go pick same dude check the highlights and your battle record with his button top right there the events there get 10 commons get unique oh look at that get a unique that'd be fantastic um, don't worry about your cars even if your pick loses you still get free credits money we like money we need money in this game perfect sold ka -ching how to play. Tap the pick icon from the lobby. There are two different modes for each to choose from. Feel free to read the screen guys and I will do a video about this for those of you who are looking to understand how it all works and obviously once I get my head around it. Events again your epic rare common cards in there to receive new ones and it is like a trade. It's a new way of trading this. This is exactly how it is. A new way to trade your cards. That's perfect. And there you go. Cool. That's not so bad is it? It's quite exciting actually. And you get the event result there, view the results, and then the rewards. Get 5,000 credits. Wow, that's good. That's really good. Really good. So, that's going to be exciting to play. That update goes live tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to split the video. Um, pause it here, and then I'm going to do the updates, the balance changes. There's not many, but we'll. I'll could go over that as well in the second part of this video. Okay, welcome back to the second part of the video. So Simon's posted about squad leaders and Simon, it's good to see Simon posting again. He has had some problems. He's been away um, unexpectedly, so you know we kind of forgive him for that. But Netmarble really should have something in place to keep posting the forums and keep us active and not let the forums get so toxic. Um, but hey, that's the way things are. But we'll draw a line and we'll move on. Uh, so we've got some updates here. Cad Bane is the first leader who can use multiple weapons on the battlefield. He could use both his uh, highly efficient blaster pistols and decimate large groups with his grenades, allowing him to be adaptable to any situation. We have noted that from a lot of feedback, the character feels as though he is too slow when changing weapons, which he is. Due to this, we're making it a change to animation speed between the switch as well as reducing the cooldown of the skill. Wow, it's already quick at 8 seconds, but it's going down to 7 seconds. And the animation speed has increased by 80%. Not damage, speed. So it's a bit like a Wild West Slinger increases um, ability there. But he has got s his cooldown has been decreased to 7. That's interesting. Fifth Brother has had his hit points increased, which is bizarre. Um, I mean, I don't tend to use Fifth Brother too much because he is a high energy cost. Um, but he is really good at, at taunting players, you know, taunting leaders and taunting units away from your turret. Um, so I tend to use him in a lot of my sister decks. Uh, 
but he, he is quite weak. So it increases hit points by a couple of hundred to him there. Imperial Heavy Gunners. Uh, they were having a slight buff and a nerf and a buff and a nerf. So energy cost is going down from 5 to 4. Uh, leader at attacks power has been decreased from 63 to 58, a slight tweak. And building attack power has been decreased from 32 to 29. Uh, they melt leaders, it's as simple as that. Uh, and obviously by reducing this now it makes it a bit more difficult to kill leaders so fast. And obviously turrets too. And the Kadarian Partisan has been nerfed. Uh, <laughs> Remember last update, he wasn't being used as much, so they boosted him, and now they're nerfing him. Welcome to, uh, you know, never mind. Um, he's one of the most outstanding combat units. I mean, he is very good, but he's expensive as well, at full energy, compared to the Grenada. Um, so reducing his hit points down from 430 to 365. This is all based on level 1, tier level 1 cards, okay? So if you obviously level them up, this will be increased slightly, but that's a big decrease right there. Other changes fixed an issue with disconnection thankfully this continues to monitor the situation fix an issue with Ben and Imperial jump troopers where they do not follow the correct attack path in certain situations fix an issue with Cad Bane where his special ability icon does not activate yeah, I've noticed that ticked it for about 100 years um, fix an issue with Chewbacca where his death animation does not show properly when he is knocked back fix an issue with stun status animation not showing correctly for Captain Cassian Andor and a Gregorian Rebel. Ooh, okay. And that is it. Wow. Nothing on Anakin, nothing on Ahsoka. Bizarre. That sums it up. More Rebel nerves and more Empire buffs. That that just sums it up. So be it, Jedi. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. There's a button there somewhere. And I will be streaming Force Arena this coming weekend uh, with the update. Super excited. I'll try to do some short videos as well with the new features added to the game that you guys can enjoy and get to understand how things work. Thanks so much for watching and may the Force be with you.